Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Aditya Gupta. So in this video, we'll be discussing about the respiratory system. Again, the NCRD based immune physiology. I won't be, uh, I'll try myself to restrict myself to physiology. So we'll be talking about the anatomy of the respiratory system of the human uh, body. So as you all know that uh, when we are inspiring, when we are taking inspiration, when we are breathing, the air first goes through our two nostrils, which are present above the upper lip. And as it goes through the nostrils, it passes into an area called as pharynx. The importance of pharynx is that pharynx is the common area where both the food from which we take and the air that we breathe comes. From there, the food goes into the esophagus and the air that we are breathing goes into the trachea. This is where the tricky part is. We all know that sometimes we can choke on food. So in order to prevent this choking, what happens is we have something called as epiglottis. I want you to remember this very important point. To prevent choking, we have something called as epiglottis. So basically, the air passes from pharynx into the larynx. The larynx is called glottis. The glottis ki jo covering hai, the covering, the upper covering of glottis is called epiglottis. It's like a cartilaginous flap which closes down. So let's assume the air has gone through the nostrils into the pharynx and then finally is going through the larynx into the trachea. Okay, this, this is where the larynx would be. In the larynx, above the larynx, there is a cartilaginous flap. So whenever we are, you know, uh, eating something, if I'm eating anything for that matter, this cartilaginous flap closes. And because of this closing of this cartilaginous flap, the food particles do not go into the trachea or the air tube and do not cause, normally do not cause choking. So air moves from the nostrils to the pharynx to the larynx. Larynx is also known as the sound box because the movements in the larynx produce the sound that I'm producing right now. Okay, so sound box is larynx. Uh, and the movement of air we have followed all the way from, uh, you know, the nostrils to the pharynx to the larynx. From the larynx, air then goes, larynx also, it's a cartilaginous block, you should remember that. From there, the, uh, from larynx, the air, uh, air moves on to the trachea. Now trachea again divides where? In the mid thoracic cavity. Remember this part? The trachea divides in the mid thoracic cavity at the level of fourth or fifth thoracic vertebra. This is what the typical traditional teaching is. There it divides into two bronchi. These bronchi will further divide into, these are the primary bronchus, they will further divide into the secondary bronchus, we further divide into the tertiary bronchus and so on and so forth. And finally it will terminate in terminal bronchioles. So this, they will keep on dividing, multiple divisions will keep on occurring, 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 occurring. Finally it will divide in, ter, terminate into something called as a terminal bronch, bronchiole. And this terminal bronchiole will further terminate into the alveolar sac and alveoli. The thing about alveoli is, as compared to trachea, trachea will be thick, okay? But we need something that can exchange the gases. And for exchange to occur, you cannot have a thick structure. You need a thin structure. And especially for exchange of gases, the structure should be very, very, very thin. And this is accomplished with the help of alveoli. Alveoli are single-celled thick, okay? Alveoli are single-celled thick. They're single-celled thick. Uh, uh, you know, sacs, which allow the exchange of gases. Because if they were more cells thick or even thicker than, you know, something like trachea or bronchi, they won't allow the passage of gas. As soon as the thickness of the, the you know, the as uh, the thickness decreases, the uh, ability for exchange of gases increases and alveolar is just one single cell thick and hence they are perfect for gas exchange as far as, uh, you know, human body is concerned for exchange of the uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide. So respiratory system can be divided into two parts. One is a conducting part and one is a respiratory part. So conduction, you know what conduction is? Conduction essentially means the, like, you know, we say conduction of sound, conduction of light, conduction of electricity, essentially things like that. It basically means to transport from one point to another. So the respiratory system, that anatomy of the respiratory system that I talked about has two parts. First is the conducting part. What is the conducting part which takes the air all the way from the atmosphere to the place where respiration or exchange can occur. That part is the conducting part. So your larynx, your pharynx, your trachea, your bronchi, all these are part of the conducting part. What is there in the respiratory part or the exchange part? That is your terminal sac and alveoli. So these terminal sac and alveoli will constitute what is the lung and they will be part of the respiratory part of the respiratory system or the exchange part of the respiratory system. And the conducting part will consist of your trachea, bronchi up to the terminal bronchiole. Also remember, your trachea and bronchi are covered, you know, to provide stability. 
so air is going inside them and air can cause turbulation you know if if i blow something uh, let's say i blow something into a straw trick is like a straw the straw can move a lot and we do not want these turbulations to occur to provide some structural support we have something called as the cartilaginous rings they are c shaped incomplete rings they are incomplete at the back they are present in the front but they are incomplete at the back so there uh, these cartilaginous ring are present in the trachea and bronchi and remember this now the lungs that we talked about which are made up of the alveoli and the terminal bronchi uh, and terminal sacs they have two layerings one uh, they have one layering that is called pleura this pleura itself is consists of two parts one is a parietal pleura and one is a visceral pleura viscera means organ so the thing which is touching the organ will be the visceral pleura the thing which is parietal means the par yani a little bit far away that is a parietal pleura the space between these two pleura is called the pleural space and the fluid which is bit present between this uh, thing is called the pleural fluid and obviously any fluid the function of any fluid in our body is most of the times lubrication so it allows lubrication to happen it allows these expansion of lungs to happen in a lubricated or a rather easier manner so now we'll learn what the ncrt says because they are going to ask you questions only from ncrt so ncrt goes with we have a pair of external nostrils opening above the upper lips it leads to a nasal nasal chamber nose and nasal passage and this nasal passage finally opens into pharynx remember this word pharynx p se pharynx okay a portion which is common for both food and air like i talked to you about whenever we are eating any food there's a good chance that it can actually from the pharynx can go into the trachea and cause cause choking the pharynx opens into larynx this larynx open into trachea so remember the sequence because they can ask you this in exam they can simply ask you pharynx goes to larynx goes to trachea and they can re reverse the sequence tell us the flow of air from where it is going they can do larynx to pharynx to uh, trachea which will be wrong they can do trachea to larynx to pharynx obviously that definitely will be wrong they can do pharynx to nasal passage to larynx to trachea again which will be wrong so it is actually nose or nasal passage to pharynx to larynx to trachea so they can ask you a question in like this way so what is larynx larynx is a cartilaginous box so they can ask you larynx is made up of which type of tissue uh, bone cartilage you know squamous epithelium or something like that and the answer would be it is a cartilaginous box and this helps in sound production so whenever we are speaking air is moving in and out and vibrations in this uh, cartilaginous box produces sound and that we which we which you are hearing right now which you can hear and it hence it's called a sound box during swallowing so whenever we are swallowing there's a good chance like i told you again emphasizing this part the reason i'm emphasizing is because uh, ch choking is pretty common in children being a pediatrician i know how common it is so what happens is during swallowing uh, the food can obviously uh, instead of going into the esophagus can go into the trachea the glottis which is basically your larynx this gets covered by a cartilaginous flap this cartilaginous flap is called epiglottis to prevent the entry of food into the larynx okay and what it is written it's a thin elastic cartilaginous flap so they can ask you that uh, epiglottis is made up of which type of uh, cartilage and the answer would be elastic cartilage okay elastic cartilage from what i remember elastic cartilage is present in the ear lobe of pinna and the uh, epiglottis basically everything that begins with e so they can easily ask you epiglottis is made up of which type of cartilage the answer would be elastic cartilage is there in ncrt okay so trachea is a straight tube it's a straight tube extending up to where to till the mid thoracic cavity so they can again ask you a question trachea extends up to upper thoracic cavity mid thoracic cavity lower thoracic cavity extends throughout the cavity and the answer would be mid thoracic cavity so that's how you can frame questions from each and every line of ncrt and which divides at the level of fifth thoracic vertebra so i said fourth and fifth thoracic vertebra that is what you will learn when you go into your first year but for from your examination point of view the answer will be fifth thoracic vertebra into right and left primary bronchi primary bronchi will divide into secondary secondary will divide into tertiary they will continue division so there are around 21 to 24 divisions that will keep on occurring uh, again don't need to remember this this uh, ending in finally very thin terminal bronchioles these thin terminal bronchioles finally give rise to vascularized bag like structure called alveoli now this part is very important i will emphasize why this part is important uh they are saying very thin okay we know why they are thin because they have to permit exchange of gases irregular walled because just since single cell they cannot be a perfect square so there will be irregular walled fair enough 
vascularized bag like structure this vascularized part is important because alveoli by vascularized it means there will be a lot of blood vessels and the reason there will be a lot of blood vessels is to permit the exchange of glasses so that the oxygen which is present in the alveoli goes into the blood and which the carbon dioxide which is present in the blood goes into the alveoli which we can then exhale out okay this branching network of bronchi bronchioles and alveoli comprise the lung so what is lung composed of it is composed of branching network of bronchi bronchioles and alveoli so they can ask you which of the following is not a component of the lung and give you ask uh, uh, the first option will be bronchi so bronchi is a component second bronchioles is a component third alveoli is a component obviously and the final thing which will they will give you they will give you larynx or trachea or pharynx they are not component of the lungs so this branching bronchi bronchioles and alveoli all three will be present in the lung but your trachea larynx and pharynx they won't be a part of the lungs okay at the same point of time they say that the primary secondary and tertiary bronchi and the initial bronchioles are supported by incomplete cartilaginous ring which i talked about you know c shaped rings to support them so they are present in primary secondary and tertiary remember this primary secondary and tertiary they are not present in where they are not present as far as uh, if i consider terminal bronchioles are concerned or let's say alveoli are concerned so they can again ask you in co incomplete cartilaginous rings are not present where they'll give you primary bronchi as an option they will give you secondary bronchi as an option they'll give you uh you know uh, trachea as an option and then finally give you alveoli or let's say terminal bronchioles as an option and that will be the correct answer again from each and every line of ncert you can have a question and you should try to read ncert in this mcq based manner next we come to the pleural fluid so we have two lungs which are covered by a double layered pleura the covering of the lung is pleura there is there is visceral and parietal pleura and there is pleural fluid between them the reason lubrication and hence reduction of friction the outer pleural membrane is in con close contact with the thoracic lining while the inner pleural membrane is in contact with the lung surface this is obvious you know this makes sense obviously so if this is the lung and this is the thoracic cavity and there will be the pleura in between them so the inner pleura will be in contact with lung and the outer pleura will be in contact with the thoracic cavity so the part all the way from nostrils to the terminal bronchioles from where nostrils to terminal bronchioles this is the conducting part why the conducting part because it conducts the air to finally the exchange of the respiratory part of the uh, respiratory system so alveoli and their ducts they are what alveoli and their ducts they will form a part of they will be the part of exchange part of the they will be the exchange part of the respiratory system okay now what is the function of the conducting part the function of the conducting part is first first and foremost transport other function of this conducting part is that ek to filtration we all know there are here here so filtration of foreign particles then the air outside you know let's say it's winters right now the air outside is uh, you know very very cold but the uh, air inside our body should be warm so while it is traveling all the way through the conducting part the air will get humidified and it will bring this air to body temperature it will become heated and it will become humidified you won't have dry air because if you have dry or a dry air then obviously they will cause dryness and that will impede the transport now exchange part is a site of actual diffusion so that alveoli are the site of actual diffusion they can easily ask you where does diffusion occur terminal bronchioles alveoli and the answer would be alveoli things like that so in this part we have covered the anatomy of the human respiratory system and i'll discuss the further uh, the rest of the chapter in further videos so thank you and have a nice day